Hey, Power App Makers. My name is Nate Hallowell, and I'm a senior trainer here at Pragmatic Works, focusing on Power Apps and Power Automate. Today, I want to talk about Microsoft's new modern controls, which are now available in the Power Apps Design Studio, where they used to just be available in Power Apps for Teams. I want to cover how to enable these new modern controls. Uh, these are still in preview, uh, but specifically, I want to get into a uh, pretty common use case and talk about uh, how to use the tabs control. So right after the intro, let's just get right into it. All right, so here we have a simple app setup, kind of a simple CRUD application uh, against the contacts table in Dataverse. Uh, so we just have a couple contacts here in my test environment. And the first thing that we need to do in order to get access to these modern controls, right? If we go up to insert and we look for, you know, the different modern controls, like if we know that tabs is one of them, um, we see that there is a component that I've built called a tablet header, but nothing called tabs. So first uh, we need to go into the settings and, and update a couple of things in order to, to bring those modern, those fluent UI controls into our Power App. Uh, so first thing, I'm going to go up here to Settings. And then within Settings, this laps, last option down here, Support. Uh, I'm going to change the authoring version. And by default, it's going to be the recommended authoring version. But we're going to go with the latest authoring version. That's what contains these preview controls. So we're going to reload and apply this version. It's going to close our Power App Studio. I'm going to say leave. And then in a moment, it's going to reopen the Design Studio. And then we'll be able to, uh, to turn on a setting that allows for these modern controls. Now that we've got the app loaded back up and we've changed our authoring version, now all we have to do is hop back over into Settings, go over to Upcoming Features, and search for Modern. We're going to turn on the ability to try out these new modern controls. And when I close out of the settings panel and go to insert, you'll notice that we now have all these modern controls. We've got uh, new button styles, different you know, drop downs. Uh, but specifically, what I want to focus on here today is some brand new controls. And that's the tab list and the progress bar. So the, the common use case that we have here is I've got a form, right? I've got basically a very simple CRUD application. I've got a list of my contacts from the contact table in Dataverse off to the left. And then over to the right, I've got a form to enter new contacts. So let's take a look at this real quick and just kind of see how awful this form is. Um, see, we've got, you know, we've got a scroll, we've got all these fields kind of just jammed together. But what if we had the ability to kind of set up uh, a tab structure where when we're on tab one, only a certain you know, number of fields show. When we're on tab two, only the next fields show. Um, so let's go ahead and, and add that tab list and see how we can kind of build that out. So I'm going to go up to insert and I'm going to insert this new tab list control. And when I do that, I'm going to drag it over here to the top of my form. I'm going to resize it a bit. Uh, and then right now it's not currently tied to anything. So it's kind of like a gallery where we have to provide items to display in those tabs. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to kind of hard code a table here. Uh, I'm going to say, we're going to do a table and I'll make this formula bar a bit bigger. And then what's in the table, I'll call this uh, first field tab name. We'll call that, uh, let's think about in terms of, you know, kind of splitting up this form. For a contact, we might just have some general info, like their first name, their last name, their phone number and email address, right? So we'll call this first tab general info. And I'm also going to give it a tab value. And we'll give that a tab value of one. I'm going to close out my curly bracket there to store that record. And I'm going to do two more records. So I'm just going to copy this line above. And then I'll paste that in here. And I'll do it one more time. 
get everything lined up nicely. This will be a tab value of two. And then finally, a tab value of three. So we're going to have three different tabs in this, uh, in this tab list control. Remove that last comma, close out my table. Uh, but first, I want to change these tab names, right? So we've got the general info tab. Um, and then the next set of fields, let's take a look at this form here. We've got first name, last name, email, business phone. I think that can all go in the general tab. And then we've got um, address street one, address city, state, zip. All right, so let's put that in the address section. We'll just put all those four fields into one section. So we'll do address, and then lastly, we've got, let's see, department, job title, birthday, and annual income. I'm just going to call this additional info. All right, so with that, if we look at what we have in our tabs, doesn't look the best, right? We, we know we have a table here. Um, we, we know we're not getting any errors in our formula, but for some reason, it's just displaying this, you know, these random numbers here, 1423, 1424, and so on. So what we have to do is actually go over to the fields and then click on edit. This is very similar to like a form um, when you, you know, edit the fields within a form and bring in different fields or drop fields. So we're just going to do edit. And now that we have this table structure in there, we have, here's our two fields that we just set in that formula. We've got tab name and tab value. So we want to display tab name. So I'm going to click add there and then look what we have. Now in our tabs, we've actually got those tabs here. And it's a uh, really nice styling here by Microsoft. You know, when you click on the tab, it's underlined in blue, it's bold, address, additional info. Awesome. So that's step one It's to actually kind of code those items in. You don't have to hard code a table like I've done here. You could also point this to um, an option set in Dataverse or a list of choices in SharePoint, or you could um, do a distinct function uh, of a table and return all the distinct values within a column. So it could, it's just like any other control in Power Apps that displays a list of items. You can put in any sort of data source here. Uh, I've just chosen to hard code this for, for this particular use case. All right, so now let's take it a step further. We know we've got these three tabs and we know we've got also a tab value function in that table. And I did that for a reason. So the reason that I've done that is now I can kind of hijack the visibility of these data cards to say, you know, this uh, tab list control, the selected tab value is one or it's two or it's three. So let's take a look at how we kind of first get that value out of the tab list control. Uh, and to do that for testing purposes, I'm just going to insert a label. I'm going to bring it over here so that you can see it. I'm going to zoom in a little bit as well. It's kind of zoomed out a little bit too far. There we go. So for the text here, let's see. Okay, how can we extract that tab value from the tab list control? So here I'm just going to write, I'm going to reference my control. So tab list one dot and let's see what we have here do we have selected we do so dot selected that's a record so it's almost like a gallery so dot selected dot tab value so we see that if we test this out it's currently on tab one this is tab two and this is tab three beautiful so i'm going to keep this label here for now so i can kind of steal the code from it but now what I can do is make this form a lot more easy to digest for users, right? They don't want to come in here, click on add a new contact and have all these fields that I met with. It's, it's a lot easier to digest if it's just a couple fields at a time. So let's, let's look at how to do that. I'm going to uh, go into each data card value and let's, let's kind of select the ones that kind of go into the general info tab. So to do that, I'm going to go over to my tree view and I'm actually going to minimize uh, this kind of hierarchy here so that I have just the data cards visible. So if I click on email and I hold shift, this is a cool trick that I learned uh, just a few months ago. If you hold shift and click the next card, it's going to feel like you can't multi-select, but right now I am continuing to hold shift. 
So if I go back to email, now I can start multi-selecting these data cards. So I'm gonna select these first four here, and I'm gonna put them into the general tab, right? Or just visible when, when the general tab is selected. So to do that, I'm gonna go over to the visible property. Instead of just being true or being visible all the time, I'm now going to kind of steal that same logic that we did with the label. I'm gonna say, uh, was it tab list one dot selected dot tab value equals one. Now, those fields will only be visible when tab one is selected. So if I test that out, I'm gonna go over to, let's say address. And now we see that those, uh, those four data cards are now you know, not visible. If I go back into general info, there they are. So I'm gonna do the same thing for all the address fields and all the additional info fields. So to do that, I'm just gonna kind of steal this code I have here. Tab list one selected tab value equals one. I'm just gonna copy that. And now I'm gonna go down to all the address data cards. So we've got address street one, the city, the state, the zip, and I'm gonna to go to visible, paste in my, uh, my code here. And instead, this time it's gonna be where the selected tab value is equal to two. I'm gonna do the same thing for the last four. So I'll go department, hold shift, click on job title, go back up to department, and then select all of my other data cards here. Go to the visible property, paste that in, and this time the selected tab value has to equal three. So now if I go up to play mode here, I've got a much nicer form that looks a lot easier to fill out. And I've got the general info, there's all my address data cards, there's all my additional info. So again, this is a very common use case in Power Apps, which is to have a form with a lot of fields and want to try to break that up into more manageable chunks using some sort of tabbing structure. Now with the new modern controls, we have the ability to do that with the tab list control. Hopefully this taught you how to kind of configure that tab list control. Um, if nothing else, it got you excited about using some of these new modern controls and at least how to start using them and how to get them into your application. So make sure that you like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. I'll be doing some more videos in the future on Power Apps and Power Automate. Really excited to, uh, to start down that journey with you all. So uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much. Take care.